Hello and welcome to another episode of the Empowered Hormones podcast. I'm your host Sheridan Decker and today I have the privilege of speaking to Michelle or Shell Robinson. Mm. So she is a soul-driven entrepreneur, international energetic kinesiologist, yoga teacher and founder of the Beautiful Subconscious Mm -hmm. podcast. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I feel like that was um, a lot of wasted chat prior to the podcast. <laughs> you should have here record sooner, but <laughs> I know we can we can revise it. But yeah, that was good. That was just a good off the cuff powwow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So for those who don't know you, can you give us a little bit of a rundown who you are, what you do, and why the world needs more of you? Ah, oh, thank you. Well, I'm Shell, and I am like you mentioned a. Uh, kinesiologist, energetic kinesiologist, quantum kinesiologist. I I specialize in understanding what's playing out in the energetics of a person's body, psyche, mind, how it's all connected. It fascinates me. The body is always talking and it wasn't anything that I necessarily thought I was going to go down as a career path, but it just one thing led to another became from becoming a mom to then embarking on a yoga journey purely for the physical benefits and just finding calm. But then it explored all the tapestry of what's going on in my mind, the inner dialogue, the emotions that had been suppressed and unresolved that had affected my physical being, my emotional being, my relationships, my relationship to myself, that it just was this unexpected flow of, I wonder where this is coming from, because if I can start to heal that, understand why, what, why, where it's it's existing, then I don't have to pass it on to my kids because mm-hmm. I can see a lot of the stuff and bless you, mum and dad, like I say this in with such love now like, and they, they well, my dad's no longer around, but my mum gets it. I'm just like, I'm not passing that on. Like I can see there were some similarities that I saw at her that I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not taking that on board. I'm not doing it. And even though you can say that consciously in moments, you can see how you react. That is so quick, so subconscious that you're like, all right, that's coming from somewhere. Where is it coming from? And so it was just those lines of questioning that embarked me on this personal uh, growth and this self-development journey that led me to kinesiology, which now I'm just like, oh my gosh, we have the answers to everything and I need to help share this as far and as wide as I can. So it was really like uh, self-discovery isn't the right word, but it's kind of this path you took and went on by yourself to kind of go, wait a second, I need to explore these things. It is. Totally. Yeah. It was a pure like investigative, like I don't want to pass this on. What do I got to do? Why is it there? Like, I just don't get it. Like my mind is like, don't do that, Michelle. But then in those moments you do those things and you're like, there's got to be a correlation. Like what is instructing those reactions? And it was those lines of inquiry, those self-inquiry that led me to, yeah, finding kinesiology and finding different modalities, but kinesiology really stuck with me because it explores the subconscious body and the way that the mind and the body communicate and the way that the subconscious controls the conscious. So when I understood that all of everything that we've ever thought, felt, believed, experienced is in the archives of our subconscious subconscious laying dormant or having an effect that we're not consciously aware of, then I was like, aha, this is a freaking gold mine where I can rewire, understand, and now no longer pass on because it's more conscious. Ah, Okay. Because I want to say, and I'm probably going to be aligned with a lot of my listeners here, acupuncture we've all got a reasonable idea acupuncture physiotherapy Mm -hmm. um you know osteo we're kind of getting our heads around a bit chiro yeah we've got that nailed gp nutritionist those things but kinesiology i don't feel like the general person on the street who said what is kinesiology totally i don't know like we have this fragmented idea so is it yeah can you explain it a little bit bit more for us yeah please absolutely I would love to firstly people are like how do I even say it and I when I stumbled across it I was like 
what is this kinesi? I, I don't even know what it is. And I'm just like, whatever it is, I don't know. I'm getting drawn to it. Makes no conscious sense, but I'm getting drawn to it. So yes, kinesiology is the study of the movement within the body. It started with chiros where they were testing particular muscles. And when there was um, the, testing the integrity of the muscles to see if the brain was passing down the right amount of messaging down to the neurons and the, the, the electrical neurons running down to the muscle tendons and uh, to ensure that the muscle could hold itself, could perform the way that it needed to. But the moment you add stress to the picture or if the body is holding stress, when you test the muscles, which is what kinesiology does, it uses a, a technique called muscle monitoring or muscle testing. When you're testing particular muscles and asking the body specific questions, your subconscious is already quickly answering. It answers before your conscious mind has the moment to be like, huh, what, what? The subconscious has already been like, Stress, no stress, fear, no stress, protect her, Don't. it's fine, it's safe. So it's already the speed of light responded and that changes the tone of your muscles. So it's a, it's a detective, like the muscle monitoring is like a body detector. So you can test muscles, you can test any muscle. We store stress in our muscles. We can understand um, when we have intolerances, that is a stress that your body is acting out in. And we can detect through your muscles like, okay, what is this about? Why is this here? What does it need in order to release it? What's it protecting itself from? And these lines of questioning and, and where it asks us to go with very specific techniques is the process of now alleviating and, and surfacing up the stress out of the muscles that is laying in there subconsciously and lifting it up and out so your body can recalibrate and no longer has to compensate for that stress within the body. Wow, that's interesting. So profound, it, hey? Yeah. So is it classically like, obviously I said to you earlier, are you doing hands-on or over Zoom and stuff kind of mm -hmm. consults? Is it classically hands-on and you've shifted and adapted to, you know, what's working really well for your clients or is it always sort of being more of a hands-off approach? It can be both. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it started off as a, a hands-on approach. So it's a uh, client practitioner to a client in testing their muscles, seeing where they are without stress, so to speak, in inverted commas, uh, without stress in the circuit, so with no stress online. And so generally speaking, the muscle can do what it's supposed to do. When you ask the mus muscle to contract, it can contract. When you ask the muscle to, you know, uh, just release and surrender, it will do that. But the moment you apply the same testing but then ask the body specific questions as to um, like, you know, you can even bring close like uh, food substances that your body, like you consciously know, like, I think that's giving me a reaction or I think I'm intolerant to that. I think that makes me bloat. Then the moment that that food substance gets close to your body, the, the integrity of the muscle starts to change. So to answer your question, like, yes, it was very, it is still and can be very hands-on where you're making somatic touch with the client's body. But now it has also like through the understanding that energy is at the very root of our body, of our muscles, energy is everything, everywhere, all at once. I can now use my body to surrogate your energetic system, your subconscious body. So I can ask my muscle wherever I am in the world, like what is these, uh, what's these food intolerance is all about that Sheridan's experiencing, so to speak, as an example, or um, these relationship issues or anything, anything that's creating stress in the body that the body has to like change from being working in an optimal state to then be in a protective survival state, you can detect no matter where you are in the world. So it's, um, you've got to get your head around it. And I think that's, that's the first step for everyone. But when you experience it and when you realize like, when you go beyond the constraints of your own mind and what you believe to be true, it's profound what you're allowing yourself to be um, able to experience and explore and release. Yeah, because it's incredible. I feel like in the last, oh, I want to say month or two, the word somatic, um, as you said, it jumped mm -hmm. out at me because I've interviewed somatic sexologists and I've talked to somatic counsellors and different people in that space and that whole going within and listening to your body, which is, you know, a core part of what you do as well. Mm -hmm. The fact that you can bring that 
online and be mm-hmm. able to help people and support people through that. But also, yes, there is energy and person-to-person stuff, but there's also something so powerful about human connection over, I don't know, over being able to do it in their safe space at home, not having to go yes. anywhere you are. I feel like it takes an element of stress and things out of it as well. So like there's, yes. there's a catch-22 there, right? Oh, it's absolutely. And I completely agree because people can, and it depends, it it will change from person to person. Some people may not feel safe in their own home, right? So they might be like, I just need to go somewhere, be in the space of the uh, clinic, be on the bed, be just disconnect from my environment. And then I can de-armor and let whatever needs to surface up, surface up. Other people might be like, you know what, like actually I I get anxiety when I go to these places or people, you know, interact with people, especially if I'm under stress, if I'm like going through something in my life right now, I just want to be at home. I just want to just completely purge whatever's coming out. Or it might not even be that deep. It could just be like, it's convenient and I just don't, can't be bothered traveling or I'm on the other side of the world or I'm at my lunch break in the, you know, in my corp, in the, um, conference room and I just need to quickly get it done that is the beauty of you know the world that we live in now yeah and then what makes it special is because every practitioner brings a different energy right so notice that with zoom calls that we're always with very different people in a podcast interview and everyone has a very different energy about them but then if I compared your energy to say a struggling client's energy very very different feel across but you can literally feel that through the Zoom screen. Like, and I think people yeah. kind of forget the power of, like you said, when you go beyond what you believe to be true and you kind mm. of go, oh, you can, like, I don't know, I can feel what you bring across. So it, it, there is something quite special in being able to do that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because then we start to get out of the, and this is where I think we kind of became unstuck a little bit in the Western world where we have to lo- like find the logic to things. We have to intellectualize. We have to conceptualize. So it doesn't make sense that you could get a physical reaction where you are in the world when I'm over here. That doesn't fit the frame of the box that I have my understanding in. So therefore it might not be true. It shouldn't be true. But when we like realize that we only know 5% of everything, probably I'm even being generous with that, (laughs) then we like limit ourselves to what we believe to be true. But when we humbly put that to the side and be like, cool, I'm open. All of a sudden you have got the access to so much more than what you've known to be true. And it's a great thing. And when you're allowed, allowing yourself to um, understand yourself more than what you know to be true. And, and I think that's where I like coming back to where I was kind of going with Western world, we need to understand our health. We need to understand the, uh, what's going on in the para, in the parameters that we only know, but it just doesn't seem to be fixing it. So it's like, if that's not working, there's got to be something else. Well, and a hundred percent, that is like the core of I want to say around the work I do, right? Like I can have someone come to me with a GI map and they've got parasites, candida and all this stuff. So I know they're symptomatic because of these things, right? But Mm. I can treat it classically down to a T with my six, seven, eight, nine years of study behind me and still not get results if they are not going, doing somatic stuff. So listening to their body, work on their nervous mm-hmm. system, thinking about energetics and thinking about the work that you do and not tying in those other elements. You don't totally. see progress. Like if there's, it goes beyond, it's not beyond science, but it's beyond sort of the principles of what it should be. A plus Conventional plus. science. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's so true. Everything is so interconnected and bringing it to the subconscious, like the subconscious will always override the conscious mind. So the subconscious, if you've got stuff that's unresolved in there, if you've got like an experience that happened and it doesn't have to be, it can be micro trauma, macro trauma. It could be something that you didn't even realize had an effect on you, but it, and you just didn't have the right amount of wisdom at that time, AKA you were a child at that time to really process it. You just kind of, you know, you're I'm just going to give a really generic example. You felt rejected from, you know, your mum growing up because she was super busy with your other kid, your other siblings. So you've just embedded this belief that I will get rejected. And, and it doesn't sound like, well, to a, every individual person, it's true for them and it has a feeling. And so when that feeling is suppressed and your body is always trying to protect ourselves from feeling something that is painful, then it's going to create or I would say um, 
utilize the energy that it would usually have to run your body optimally. It's now detouring some energy to protect you from that pain so you don't have to feel it. So therefore, you're now living in a real mild, perhaps to begin with, compensated state. But then with that not resolving and energy is in that subconscious emotion, emotion is energy, that emotion of rejection. If that emotion is not being expelled or expressed, it's going to need to move somewhere. So it grows and grows and grows. So something that was mild, something that was just like, I feel, you know, and you wouldn't be probably aware as a child, but if it's not the feather, it'll be the brick, it'll be the bus. And all of a sudden where you felt like, yeah, I'm compensating for that fear of rejection. It's filtering out into every area of your life. It's affecting you mentally. It's affecting the way that you, your esteem, it's affecting your emotions. It's affecting your uh, relationships and it's, and it starts to grow bigger than what you believe it to be. And all of a sudden you've created these symptoms of your body from a symptom of stress. Yeah, yeah. Is that like you've, because you've t- talked about before this like inner world affecting your outer world and then yeah. kind of the fundamentals of energetics. How would you describe to someone who doesn't really understand when you say energetics or sure. energy? I feel like that in itself is, it needs to be unpacked because people go, oh, energy, totally. right, right? But you're talking yeah. about so much more than just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so when we talk about energy on a scientific term, energy is the makeup of molecules. It's made up of electrons, neutrons, protons together. These are like really, really tiny. Tiny ass, <laughs> tiny ass electrons coming together. That is a vibration. And so when we strip back our physical body, when we microscopically look further, further in the things that would appear to be a physical matter, when you break that down, that is all energy responding to each other. And so we are talking on a cellular level energy. And within that energy, there is very distinctive vibrations. Everything is a vibration that is regenerating. So even the thoughts that we have, even the beliefs that we have, even the emotions that we have, they're their own frequency that have an effect within ourselves, that if they're left unresolved, then our cells are regenerating that same BS, that same programming that is, like you know, uh, re- having an effect on um, the way that we sleep. It's having an effect on our stress. It's having an effect on. And so when I talk energy, it's like underneath matter, underneath our physical body, underneath our emotions, underneath um, our organs, at the very root of that is energy. And so energy affects matter and energy. So when we think of us, even a symptom, when we think of um, IBS, when we think of any, that is the matter form of energy that is um, in a, in a stressed state, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I think it's, it's good for people to try and understand this stuff because words like energy or even subconscious, you know, those things that we do have to tap in is something that we're not good at and on a very simplistic level if I get a client and they come into my program and I ask them if they've been tracking their period or when they get bloating or anything like that when when do they get stressed they don't have any idea because people are not good at going within and tuning Mm -hmm. into these things and that's where the beauty of you know so your work comes into it as well because people disassociate that actually and even with their gut as well like I'll be like okay Mm -hmm. when when are things bad is it around your period or around ovulation when we go I don't know right because they're not tracking they don't have the data they're not paying attention and they're just like I'm in pain and then I'm not, or, you know, my period was heavy this month and then I didn't think about it for another three months. Like when I tell people, oh, I know, like I know when I'm ovulating, I know when I get bloated, I know, you know, they're like, wow, you know so much about your body. I'm like, yeah, but people don't listen. You're not listening to your energetic, you know, within you. You're not listening to what your body's telling you. And then that Mm. ties into the subconscious stuff. Like people don't listen into that as well I feel like yeah well it's it's and it's very true and I was absolutely like that as well I was just like I'm just the way that I treated my body the relationship I had with it it was almost like it was way too slow my mind is quicker I feel more efficient in my mind it feels more empowered and more I can control my mind somewhat but the body I don't know it just seems like it's it lagged that was my you know once upon a time thought beliefs but I understand that like, you know, a lot of people when they 
think about themselves. I think about their energy. They think about what's going on for them. Sometimes like it, it can be a lot and, and I, and I, and I get it. People just feel um, that their mind and their body are two different things. They're more comfortable with their mind, but exploring their body, it's just like we've never really learned how to, well, we've forgotten that sense of our body's intuitive cues and being attuned to our body and the intelligence that it holds and the way that our body is always communicating and giving some sort of signals. It, it, if we really allowed the space for us to under, understand our body, we can sense when we're ovulating through the cues that might not be from the mind constraints and how we've worked out how to understand things. But if we, yeah, again, bypass that and start to work out the new, uh, the languaging that's always been there, so to speak, of the body, it has its specific cues of ovulation period, your moods, everything is always, you know, expressing itself in a way that you may not or you may have forgotten in the Western world. Does that tie into pain then as well, right? Like having that connection between your subconscious and I don't know, your ability, the way you perceive pain, the way you deal with pain, um, the what you know, in your terminology, the way you say we liberate our pain. How does yeah. that tie into it as well? Yeah. So I mean Pain, pain can be so many different things. Pain can help us in terms of taking action, in terms of being like, okay, here's pain. Yeah. In the world of sub, uh, in the world of kinesiology, we obey pain. We're just like, cool. This client's coming in to see me because she's in abs or he's in absolute pain. Maybe if it's their physical being, like I just feel so anxious. Like I just don't know what this is from. Or emotionally, they're just like, I feel I'm up and down with my emotions. Like I react off the cuff and I don't know where that's come from. Then I feel guilty. Then I feel shame. Then I feel like I'm a bad mom. Then I feel like I'm a shitty partner. Or they could be feeling like I can't switch my mind off. I feel so whatever they. They're in pain. They're struggling in those states. So with kinesiology, we obey those pains. It's like, okay, so why is the body reacting in that way? Why is the body responding in that way? So that pain, we're like, okay, this is a very clear messaging of the body that it's not in alignment. It's not working in its optimal state. So we ask specific questions from that surface experience of like she's or he's coming in with, um, you know, anxiety and we ask very specific questions to almost like de-layer it to get to the root source of where it is and all the things that have contributed for it to have that top layer result. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's so important because you're right. There is, we're so, we're so aware of the surface stuff like anxiety, or whatever, like we're very aware. I don't feel right or I feel anxious or I feel off yeah. or whatever it is, but we are not good at sitting with it and then stepping yeah. in and unpacking it and being like, yeah. But why? Like it's so easy yeah. to either medicate or go do something or exercise or numb it with food if there's emotional eating things or whatever it is to just kind of go, I don't, I, I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to sit with that. And yeah, yeah. you're right. Like that's where an expert like you comes in because trying to unpack where that comes from, like that's hard. Like there's a yeah. lot of different facets in that, surely. Yeah, there is. Like it's it and it. It feels at the start very over, like it can be perceived as very overwhelming because you're like, I've got a lot of stuff in my, like, I don't want to unpack <laughs> mum's stuff. I don't want to unpack dad's stuff. Why would I want to sit in my sad? Like, I remember I used to be like, I don't have time to be sad. Like, I just, someone get this sadness out of me because I, like, as if I want to cry. Like, and so that would be my impatience of, I don't want to have to deal with my stuff. Like, I've got, I've got time that I'd rather dedicate to other things. And it, that, disregarding of my actual needs was a very common thread and a common thing that I would do a lot of my life. I like disregard my needs, what disregard, whatever was uh, good for me, so to speak. Um, but I understand that when, yeah, we are faced with going deeper, it can be very uncomfortable for people, very, very fearful. They're just like, I just don't know what's going to be revealed. And that scares me. And I totally get that. But the beauty of this type of work and a lot of other modalities, but this is what attracted me to kinesiology the most, is that you don't have to talk. Your body is doing the talking. So there can be a sense where if you don't want to talk about, you know, your mum's stuff and how you had a, a strange relationship or she, you know, she was X, Y, Z and we love mum. We're not mum shaming or anything like that, but it's just pure data. Like however they made you feel is still real and that's okay. And it's not blaming them. It's just like, it is what it is. Why is it there? What does it need? Let's get it up. And so 
we don't have to, if it, if your body is indicating that there is, that is more st- stressful to actually verbalize it and say the words, like whatever it is, like, I hate my mom. Like no one necessarily wants to say, say that generally speaking, but you feel it. And that feeling and that emotion is still causing stress within your body. And if you're not expelling that, then you're, you're compensating around it. So what your body is doing is expressing itself like it would verbally or in a way that it feels safest to without you needing to unpack like it's because she did this it's because this happened it's your body can bypass every little story grab it along the way and you don't have to verbalize everything we can bypass all of that to get to the root core of where it's stored within your subconscious to alleviate it by bringing it up and out and so that's what appealed to me about kinesiology because in those moments of stress where I'm just like I just am like losing my shit and I don't even know why and my throat would clump over and the words wouldn't come out my body would be responding in stress my mind couldn't compute the emotions to express so I'm just like this lady's probably thinking I'm a freaking psych like weirdo I can't express myself so you're judging yourself at that same time so all this stuff is playing out on so many different levels like I can feel it I don't know what it is she's probably judging me I'm judging me that I'm thinking she's judging me all that stress circuitry it is data and your body is just showing us that it's in this state of stress and we can get to the underneath it bypass all of the story get to the source underneath it so we can alleviate it and all that layering on top of it starts to dissipate as your body is no longer trying to protect the root source of that stress So in a practical sense, then, if you're thinking about, I almost want to use the word purge, right? It's not the right word. but No, it's a perfect word. You're working, like, say I start working with you and you start that first however many sessions you have in however many weeks, I don't know how it works, but this stuff starts to come up. And the idea is that even like you said, you don't always verbalise it, but you're working through it. So then Mm -hmm. you must, in theory, I guess, get to a point where you kind of, maintenance in a sense that either you're better at working through things on a daily basis or you are better at like I'm not good at setting time to work through my emotions I know that I'd rather just go to work than do yeah. that but I almost think well if I spent the time and you work through that initial stuff of mom or dad or childhood or whatever it is that's happened yeah. and then you go into hey I see Shell once a month or whatever it is. And on a daily basis or a weekly basis, I sit with my shit and I work through it. You know what I mean? Like, so you kind of, there must be like where you are now at a sense that you're no way saying I'm perfect and I'm fully healed because you're Mm -hmm. human, right? But there must be a level where you go, yeah, I now know that on a daily or a weekly or whatever basis it is, people just got to sit and work through stuff, whether that's journaling or meditating or totally totally and the beauty of this is is that you feel comfortable and safe enough to do it as well like you're not like I'm gonna overwork or overachieve because I don't I I don't feel comfortable sitting with myself I don't feel comfortable in asking for what I need I don't feel comfortable in receiving support anymore it's like all of those things that once were the was a thing it's mind-blowing how it's absolutely not like the whole sense that I wasn't actually able to verbalize or articulate the stress that I had once upon a time because, and and the regret and the shame I would have around it. Now it's just not a thing. I remember that time, but it's no longer charged anymore. It's completely neutralized within my nervous system and in my psyche. So it's no longer an active stress because it's resolved. And when it's resolved, it becomes neutral. You become, find that state of balance. And so now all of a sudden, or not all of a sudden, but in time, you are more comfortable with sitting with yourself. You're more a truer version of yourself because you're not trying to, you know, harbor these things you don't really want to deal with. So you're not in this compensated state of stress. You're like, I'm actually in a way more contented, more peaceful, tranquil state, but excited and more authentic state to just express what comes out. I'm not going to shame myself after it. And it's coming out actually quite level-headed. It's not like an emotional outburst. It's like, awesome. I'm improving in that regard too. And all of these things you're starting to become more of a more true version of yourself because you're no longer harboring the stress within your subconscious. Yeah, neutralized. I love that word. The nervous yeah. is neutralized. And that makes sense because you're right. no longer, yeah, in that reactive fight or flight state. Exactly. And I guess like on multiple levels, I say that with women going through my program because as their nutrients and their minerals and their magnesium and stuff obviously all increases, their mm-hmm. ability to handle stress also increases. But totally. I think as people commit to working on the physical body, they then do sometimes go, hey, actually, 
internal somatic nervous system trauma yeah. of those things because it's kind of a an approach when someone finally commits to I'm going to start healing they then sort of broaden their horizons as to what healing actually looks like as well yeah yeah I mean it's either whichever one you start with first is perfect like whatever you feel is needed for you in that moment is perfect whether you start on the physical first whether you start on the energetics but both of them combined is what's going to eventuate soon enough when you get to that point of I need to integrate my physical like my actual physical body and work and get it every system working as optimal as I can, but then I understand that within that physical body is a whole bunch of stuff we store in our subconscious and in our energetics within that physical body. So I'm going to address those things as well. So they're no longer a thing. And before you know it, you've got a really primed, physical, well-functioning, optimally functioning physical body because your energy and your subconscious and your nervous system is no longer harboring or holding on to these emotions anymore. You've neutralized them. They're no longer, you know, taking priority and precedence over the way your body should be operating and the way that your body can optimally function. It's no longer like, you know, addressing these things unknowingly and compromising the way that it functions and sleeps and communicates to each other. So it, it's it's one or the other, but both eventually is where you'll get to, I believe, in, in these journeys when you really start to prioritise um, your health and your well-being. Yeah, because I think a lot of people now are more conscious of the fact of the gut-brain connection, right? Like it yeah. is a lot more talked about and then also mental health and the types of bacteria in our gut and, you know, serotonin levels and all those kinds of things as well. So it, I don't know, as yeah, as we work on one, the other does kind of fix. But I still think there's a lot of women who, or I hear it all the time, they're like, oh, like my gut is getting slightly better, but I'm just so stressed and I've got all this stress that sure. I deal with and they still just like, Put it to the side and be like, the stress we'll deal with later, but right now I'm just going to work on my diet. And I'm like, yeah. you, can't, yeah. you can't do one without the other. And it's kind I of like know. the vaginal microbiome stuff we are chatting about earlier. Like so many yeah. people come in and they're like, I've got thrush and BV and herpes and it's reoccurring. I'll take, you know, the thrush medication, maybe some probiotics, but it's going to come back every month. And it's like, this is just what it is without digging deeper and going, hey, wait, what's the emotional side of things what's exactly what's you know like we're so like you said at the start we're so clinical and go okay from a sciencey point of view my ph is out therefore i must do xyz without going is the body talking to me yeah like why is my ph out like what's it really like because the body knows the body is designed to to work at a and communicate to each other scott we've got everything that we need if it's in a state of malfunction it's just like why is that there we've got the ability to be able to find out but like like you said with um with the conditions of the body and our hormones and and when we're in that state of stress as you, as you'd be so aware we are either depleting our magnesium super super fast or our body is in that constant state of stress that it doesn't have have, it's not a priority in its hierarchy of survival to absorb the nutrition and the, uh, the minerals as adequately as it can because it's in a state of stress. The body and the, even like within the tissues and the cells and the organs and the um, hormones of the body, they are still in moments like, you know, in a state of stress that they aren't like putting their hand up to be like, okay, like, yes, minerals, please come in, come on in. Let it, like I'm protecting myself right now. Okay. I'm protecting, yeah. I'm like keeping yeah. us alive right now. You can just sit and wait. And so all these things start to build and then they just have that compounding effect. Right. So it's like, yeah, we can take all the medic. I mean, I don't really advocate for that, but <laughs> whatever we need to do, you know, it, it, it seems easier now in a lot of people's minds to take something to alleviate it but it's just like there's so much more that uh is the body is asking for if and if, if you could just give it the moment of, of time to understand it i think because that's where the tricky bit is right is we don't know what we need emotionally energetically yeah. or to support right like because you obviously we know if i have thrush that's a yeast I need to take an antifungal right like that's right. obviously that's not the way I work it's root cause stuff yeah. but there's an yeah. A plus B plus C so it's like that's yeah. what I must do I'm in pain I need to take Panadol the pain goes away but it's sure. like I'm upset I'm reactive I'm mm. really annoying to be around like it's like yeah. what 
what we don't we don't have the tools or the resources exactly to work with someone like yourself to actually work through that Exactly. And it's a lot like, you know, we weren't, mo most of us weren't really taught know how to, to manage our emotions. Our parents had no idea, how to, most parents had no idea how to manage their emotions. So we're all just getting by with the tools that we were given with, you know, a little bit more that we've evolved them in. But it's like, we weren't really taught how to handle that. So to know what we need in that moment, like, again, we don't know what we consciously don't know, but the subconscious knows it all. So when you talk to your body and find ways to understand it and through the line of kinesiology in, in this regard, we talk directly to the subconscious because it answers before the conscious. So we can ask these questions of like, why am I reactive and, you know, a pain to be around right now? And it can start to surface like, hey, you're f this is what's active within you, an emotion of feeling betrayed. I just pulled that out of nowhere. And so your response from when you were first ever betrayed was to protect yourself and push people away. And so e even that line of patterning of pushing people away, that template is probably playing out as well as your body. Like I'm going to push the good away. I'm going to push the nutrients away. I'm going to push the minerals away. And so that protection is playing out on a cellular level as well. Not just a physical, not just an emotional, but a cellular level. I'm going to repel to protect myself. I'm going to repel. So until you address that coding and that programming, then it's more likely going to happen on a micro level and on a macro level. Yeah, and that's fascinating. But the, I guess also there's one thing as you, you know, to identify that in someone and be like, okay, Sheridan, you're repelling things. But then to create change, like yeah, I don't yeah. even know how, where you start with that. Right. Like yeah. obviously the magic of what you do in a sense, but also being able to work through that with someone so that they get out of those behavioural patterns. Like that's should be sure. hard. It would, it would appear, it would seem like it would be right. It would seem that it would be, but the moment you have now transmitted something, well, uh, transformed, I should say something from being subconscious. So you're not clued on to that. You're not clued on. You're just blindedly being controlled by this, you know, puppeteer doing, but now you're aware of it. Now you're aware that you repel your subconscious. That is no longer a default in your subconscious. You've brought it up to the conscious surface and it's changed quality. So now it's no longer going to have that same effect. So you don't have to consciously uh, necessarily think of like, don't, do not repel. Like I, that's a <laughs> lot to manage. That is a yeah. lot to manage. It's already taking place in your subconscious. And when it lands in the subconscious, the conscious mind will follow suit soon enough because the subconscious controls the conscious. Yeah. So when the subconscious is on par, like, Hey, it's safe to not repel now because we brought it up to the subconscious mind, uh, conscious mind and understood why and where and how it started sort of took place. Your subconscious is like, I, it's safe to let this go. I don't need this anymore. And so it lets it go. It neutralizes it your subconscious releases that and then soon enough your conscious mind will follow suit so all of a sudden you're just not repelling anymore you're not and so you don't have to consciously think yeah because isn't that um I get this wrong but isn't that kind of how we use meditation in the senses of, as well it's not so much that five ten minutes that you're sitting there trying to not think of anything or whatever it is you're doing you're mentoring but it's the fact yeah. that you're retraining your body how it feels safe or I don't know, there's proper terminology around it, but so that when you do go around your day-to-day -day life, you can restore back to that default of sort of neutral faster, like that. Those totally. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So with meditation, you are again, bypassing the conscious mind and finding that space of nothingness, if that's the type of meditation that you're doing. So you are reprogramming the neurological pathways to not control you. You've all of a sudden started to master your subconscious, which is what I'm all about. You started to master your mind to be like, okay, I can see where I would generally go, but now there's a bigger buffer between me and actually doing it. That buffer is your choice. That buffer is your decision of, do I want to do that or do I don't? Your, that buffer is your empowerment. So you can see all the reactive behavior. You can see once upon a time that what would just naturally take place and you're like, damn it. And look, we're human. It's probably going to happen again, but it's just yeah. the compassion and the uh, humility of just bringing yourself back to, okay, it looks, I had a little slip. So I was, I'm coming back to that space of like, I'm kind to myself. I, I'm at full acceptance. I'm full, just, you know, in complete unconditional acceptance and love. And I, I can see those patterns again. And I, I, there's a bigger buffer now and I'm not 
reacting as much. So yeah. that's my definition or my explanation of that. I think also this is where people forget the beauty of a practitioner, right? Like if I had, and I'm going to get this wrong, but if I had a session with you booked in, let's just say every week or whatever, or every month, mentally for me, knowing that I'm seeing you, when I go to react, I would have past experiences of you and me talking about what I used to do or what I'm prone to doing or, you know, or what my reactive behavior is. And I might still react in the same way, but I'll come back to neutral faster because I'll pull myself up and be like, oh, we talked about this and I do that. I get angry quickly or I lose my patience or whatever. So you pull yourself back, you check in and you sort of, I don't know, you have something to work towards as well in a sense. Like you kind of, you journal it, you'd work it out and be like, okay, when I see Michelle next time we're chatting about this, we're doing X, Y, Z. And I just, I don't know, I see that in my clients when they have a session with me booked in or they're coming to a group call or whatever it is and they're reflective on what they ate, how they fell off the bandwagon, how they felt after, how it was terrible, how they then within two, three days were like, I was back to being bloat free because I was like, I've got to get, you know, I can't just keep drinking again or whatever it is. So you, I don't know, that accountability and that support, you're not there with me every step of the day, but in my head, I kind of feel like you are like this. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, and, and I think like what you just said is that like what you've become more conscious, more aware, more like really privy to the wisdom of that. It's just like, hey, I now know through evidence and experience that every time or the weekend of just drinking too much and eating kind of crappy food, like, I mean, that's a bit of a note. Like it seems like that's quite common and we can understand that. But when we start to experience like, hey, um, that when I ate that, that created a, an effect and I'm when I'm the moment I cleared that or the moment I stopped eating that or I supplemented it with something that was in more alignment to whatever it is or on the protocol that has been drawn upon, I can now see the results. It I don't it's like you can really embody the wisdom that you yes. heard, but now you're really experiencing. Yes. yes. Yeah. That that is what it is. And I think that's how people transform and change, I guess, because yeah, you've got that support, you've got the accountability, you've got that motivation. And then yeah, you take it on. Whereas yeah. when you sort of, I don't know, there's people who might do one session and same with me, they do one thing, but they don't, they don't embody it. They don't take mm -hmm. it on. And they, then it doesn't obviously do anything. You can't change anything in one moment. It's like, yeah, it, yeah. It, the exactly. timeline. Yeah. And the growth. Totally. Yeah, like it's like everything needs repetition. No matter what field you're working in, the whole rewriting progress and uh, pro uh, pro uh, process and the whole relearning or to unlearn to relearn, it's going to need to take practice. It's going to need to have repetition. So w no matter what field of work anybody is, one session of anything is yeah. unlikely going to have long lasting change. <laughs> yeah. Especially at our age. It's like, man, yeah. I've got a whole truckload of baggage we need to Oh my God. Well it, like it's true. <laughs> we and like I'm I'm glad that you said that because as adults, we do hold on to our beautiful yeah. junk a lot more. Like it's we we concrete it in it. We identify with it. We know how to manage it. We know how to work around it. It's like furniture in your house. But so when I work with kids, like they're just like, oh yeah, get rid of that. Oh, like, and they're you know they're so not attached to their stuff. And it's just like, I love kids. And they've got that playful, curious sort yeah. of vibe about them, which we can somewhat dim as we get older, um, if we allow ourselves to. So it's just like, yeah, it's just decluttering, just decluttering all of it. <laughs> so if people do want to learn more about how to work with you and what you do and the things you provide, where are the best places to find and stalk you? Yeah, well, I am on Insta as Shell Marie Kinesiology. So if you start just typing Shell Marie, the rest of it will come. Don't think you need to know how to spell kinesiology. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a bonus. <laughs> um, and my website is shellmarie.com. So I would love to, yeah, just chat whoever feels inspired to, yeah, please reach out. I will definitely link those in for you guys as well. And I'll tag Shell on my stories so you guys can have a squeeze at her things as well. But thank you so much. That was, my pleasure. Oh, that was so informative. And it does, like the work you do is incredible and I don't feel like there's enough spotlight on it yet. But I genuinely believe it's like what the gut health space was 10 years ago, right? When I first got sick, no one was talking about microbiome testing. And now, you know, it's not unusual for someone to chat to you about your poo. Like, 
Like it's kind of out there, right? And bloating and IBS. And I feel like in the next five to 10 years, the words like somatic nervous system and kinesiology are, I don't want to say the next big thing, but they are gaining the attention they deserve. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I do feel like they're, they're, it's kind of like yoga, however long ago it was, people were like, oh, now yeah. everyone's a bit more open to it. So I do feel like there's traction. So I'm excited to be on that ride. Perfect. Thanks so much for being here, Cheryl. Pleasure. Thank you, hon.